this is the proclamation as it was printed, uh, which explains that William and Mary, Prince and Princess of Orange, are now William and Mary, King and Queen of England, uh, France, Scotland and Ireland. And it has a note on the bottom of it which says that it was proclaimed and read in a number of places which it lists around the city of London and the city of Westminster. So this is how most people find out that they now have a new king and queen. In, in terms of government, uh, this reign is always seen as the um, defining moment of cabinet government. It's when the, the monarchy is, because it's elective, because it rules with the consent of, of parliament, it's the moment when we start to talk about the king in cabinet or in council ruling with the consent of the legislature and the aristocracy. This is uh, another broadside that again would have been published uh, uh, on a wall or read aloud. And it is, it's called uh, Reasons for Crowning the Prince and Princess of Orange King and Queen Jointly and for Placing the Executive Power in the Prince Alone. The fact is that they were joint monarchs but William had the executive power. He was the one in charge. Uh, and so the sixth part of this is actually their justification for that and it is an entirely and unexpectedly misogynistic explanation that a woman should not be in charge of her husband, basically. This is uh, a personal letter of condolence to uh, Lady Anne Walsingham, who I think is part of the Queen's household. Uh, this is entirely personal. She wrote this out herself. She si uh, seals it, and this is how we definitely know it is her, with a joint seal of her and uh, William's coats of arms, but in black, because it's a condolences letter. So normally that would be red, this is black. Uh, so this is an essay on the memory of the late Queen, written by one of the bishops, the Bishop of Sarum, uh, and published the year after she died. This is, this is the formal public eulogisation of the Queen, and this is the sermon that goes with it uh, from the Archbishop of Canterbury. Uh, this is the private face of mourning her death. This is the only provenance we have to say that this is true is this piece of paper or these two pieces of paper. But they say that this locket contains uh, her hair. Um, and it was probably, by the look of it, something that might have been worn on a ribbon around someone's neck or on a ribbon somewhere else as a keepsake of the Queen.